Hi everyone, Alexa here with the Duval Homestead and today I'm going to share with you how we organized our kitchen pantry. kitchen. I cook dinner for my husband and I every single night. We have breakfast here at our homestead and sometimes lunch and so it's really important to me that everything in our pantry has a purpose and gets used often. I also did this for our spice cabinet organization and I'll link that video below. So I did a tutorial just like this one on just the spice cabinet which we had two spice cabinets in our kitchen. So I did all of this for our spices, our smoothie ingredients, so chia seeds and flax seeds and protein powder and then I also organized our essential oils, vitamins, and tea. So all of the kind of the really small items I did in a different video. So I'll link that below if you want to see that one. I really only need a few key ingredients to make dinner for my husband and I every night. We do homemade dinners from scratch, smoothies and farm fresh eggs in the morning, and lunch is either leftovers or you make something different as a meal. So some of the key ingredients that we can't live without in our pantry are flour. I use all-purpose flour at least once a week. Every week I make chocolate chip cookies for my husband and I. We like to have dessert after dinner so that's the flour I use for that I've always done that and recently we've been using the flour for sourdough starter so we have a sourdough starter and we make pancakes and all sorts of stuff with that sourdough we also have been making bread and so I also have some bread flour that I've been using for that another couple of key ingredients that we use a lot are sugar so brown sugar and white sugar we buy organic brown and white sugar another thing we're keeping in the pantry are beans we have several types of beans up here that we can soak overnight and use to make chilies and soups and other dishes with beans. I like to keep a lot of this stuff on hand even though I may not use it every day because we have some really crazy weather where we live and you never know when you could be snowed in or we also get some flooding. So it's really important that we have a good stock of food that may not be needed all the time but is ready to go when it is needed. Oatmeal. So we keep rolled oats and we keep steel cut oats. My husband and I like to use these for um, overnight oats, so we actually soak those the night before and then it makes a really good breakfast in the morning. So we keep those in the back here. I also use the oats for fermented chicken feed. So the chickens really enjoy the oats and so I soak those in a fermented feed mixture that I make for them. Next, it's really important to me to have a lot of potatoes, garlic, and onion. Those are three staple foods that I use in so much of our cooking. I put potatoes in our roasted chicken or I make french fries or I just put them on the stove chopped up, make them as a really nice side dish. So we we like sweet potatoes and regular potatoes. And then onion and garlic, of course, are used in so many dishes. I buy our garlic and onion from our local farm stand. So I just go to the farm stand and pick up onion and garlic and it truly is so much better than store-bought. It's not even funny. The garlic especially is so much better. So we try to buy that whenever it's available and when we can. But if not, of course, store-bought will do. And of course, pasta. We love having pasta. So I keep a lot of pasta. It's actually one of the very few things we buy at Costco because we buy it in bulk and we keep an organic pasta outside in the garage. This allows us to make pasta about once a week. We'll do like a traditional Italian spaghetti. In the summertime, I like to make my own tomato sauce from our tomatoes that we either grow or that we can get down the street. But we don't have the those nice juicy ripe heirloom tomatoes right now, so we're just gonna use the store-bought sauce. So I want to talk a little bit about how I organized this pantry. So before I did this project of organizing it, the pantry didn't look too terrible, but it definitely was a lot less organized and had a lot more bags and items that I really didn't use very much anymore. I'm just trying to keep the ingredients that I really use all the time. And my goal was to have everything that I use either every day or at least once a week, if not more. I wanted all that stuff to be within reach and really easy. I also wanted the, the pantry to look nice, but I didn't want to prioritize looking nice over making it easy for me. I really wanted to make sure that the first priority was to make everything I need every day very accessible. And anything I don't need every day, I wanted to keep it if we were going to use it and toss if we weren't. And I wanted to put it elsewhere. I keep it in a nice, safe spot so that when I needed it, I knew where it was, but I didn't want to have to look at it every day if we weren't going to be using it. First, I cleaned the pantry out. So I took everything out and I only did one shelf at a time because this actually took me a few days. And the first thing I did was I cleaned the shelf. These shelves hadn't been cleaned since we moved in. And I was looking up in the pantry and noticed that in the upper corners of the pantry, there were some serious cobwebs and some weird, um, kind of, it looks like water damage up to the wall. So this was a really good thing. And actually this is why I couldn't finish this, this project in one day was because we noticed some other things going on. And we actually did have a water leak, which 
we had seen before, but I uh, we didn't know that it had spread to the pantry as well. So don't worry, it was all dried up by the time we saw it, and it's been addressed already. So it's important to kind of look up at your ceilings every now and then. And that probably sounds obvious. Maybe it is to you. It wasn't to us. So I got the vacuum out and I cleaned the cobwebs, and I also rotated the shelf. These were wooden shelves, and the owners painted them with white. And I noticed that they didn't paint the, the edge that went along the back wall. So it was still that raw wood color. And I thought it was actually really pretty. So I turned the shelves around so that that wood now sticks out. So I thought it just looked a little more natural, but I'm really glad that I took the shelves apart so I could understand that. Next, I took all of the baking goods. That was one of my biggest priorities was organizing the baking. So we do a lot of baking and it, it, today is January. So the last couple months, December and November were the you know busiest baking times for us. And we used so much flour and sugar and baking powder and baking soda and sprinkles and just all of the baking things. So I, I got these large organizational containers off Amazon and I'll leave the links below for some of the items I'm, I'm using here. Some of them I got a long time ago so I don't think I have a source for them but these containers are definitely on Amazon and they are lifesavers. I only bought a few of them. I didn't buy them for everything because I just wasn't sure if I would need them. The next thing I did was I took mason jars and I got actually some bulk mason jars from a neighbor of ours on Facebook Marketplace for I think $10 and I got like 50 mason jars. So I just used those kind of randomly, but I had this white pen that I wrote on each mason jar what it was. And it's a washable pen for glass. Um, and I use that for a lot of small items. You'll see cranberries, pumpkin seeds, almonds, clove, bee pollen, elderberries, peas. So I organized all of that. And prior to doing that, those were all just in bags. So the amount of bags that were piling up in the pantry were getting excessive. So I was really wanting to just get rid of the bags so I could see what I had. <laughs> I also wanted to put some really important food items in a nice big bowl and have it in the pantry. So potatoes, onion, and garlic are three items that we have in our household all the time. I'm always cooking with onion and garlic and we're always making stuff with potatoes. If it's going to be used every day, it needs to earn a spot in the pantry. So I just said whatever was on that shelf before, we have to find a new spot for it because I really wanted the onion, garlic, and potatoes in the pantry because I reached for those almost every day. I also found a small little wooden basket that I used for excess flour, so the overflow flour that is that didn't fit in the storage container. Originally, I wanted, I had this expectation of all of the bags would be gone, everything would be in a labeled container, but that's actually not realistic because if you buy in bulk, most likely you're going to have some extra. I decided to just designate, I call it overflow baskets, so I have certain places where extra stuff can go, and I'm totally okay with that as long as it's in a basket and it looks organized. That way I know I have it, as opposed to just throwing it in the back, and I'm totally guilty of this, taking your flour that you bought and you're gonna just like stuff it as far back as possible and hope that you remember it's there one day and I never remember so I said I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> I found this really cute wooden organizer. It says Avalon Dairies. And I actually think I got this from Michael's, but I thought it was really cute and really useful. So I used that to organize some of our other kind of backup items that we use occasionally, like almond milk, some backup bone broth and backup soups, backup taco seasoning, backup almonds. And then I got this large basket to store some other dry items that we don't use all the time. So I have a bag of chips in here. I have some taco shells and some oatmeal. I also have some flour products that I use rarely. So some tapioca, which was used for a rabbit raspberry pie in the summertime. Now my rule of thumb is usually if you don't use it in the last year then you shouldn't own it unless it's got some special exceptions. So I did throw away some things like um, I think I had corn flour which I don't even know what I used that for in the first place but it was over a year ago and it was gigantic so I took that out and I had so much more space. And more and more I'm starting to really shorten the list of ingredients that I make stuff with in the first place. I really use the same set of ingredients almost with everything I make and I love it. It makes it really simple and I really get to know that ingredient, like I get to know the all-purpose flour, or I get to know coconut oil, and I really can use it for so much more than I originally thought. And then at the bottom of the shelf, this isn't very exciting, but we do have a bunch of paper bags for recycling, and this is where we keep our trash bags. So it's a nice tip because you might think to yourself, oh, you know, if you want your kitchen to look pretty, you won't want to put any trash bags in it and all this like realistic stuff. No, that's not true. You can put it, you can put the trash bags in a pretty basket. So that's what I did. Next, I tackled the 
garage. So the garage is just the second level of our pantry. So it is right next to the pantry. So it's only a twist of a doorknob and a arm reach away from me. So it's not far. So I'm saying that because if you're wondering why we have certain items in our garage and you're thinking, that's crazy, you can never, no one would ever go to their garage for that. Keep in mind, it is literally right next to this pantry. So I thought, let's use it as a second pantry. So that's exactly what we did. So my husband built this custom shelf that when we bought the house, there was a metal rack, kind of a couple of different metal rack shelving that was put in on this wall right here. And it was really flimsy, so it was like a teeter-totter. If you put something on one side, it would fall either way on the other side. And so it really wasn't very useful. So we built this shelf for our garage and it was one of the best things we could have done because we were able to build it to fit our needs. So some other things that I use on the daily basis and need access to are animal food. So the chicken feed and our cat food. So that's where we keep that. And then bulk items. So toilet paper, paper towels, Kleenex, items that we go through in the household. So we put all of those on top. Now I'm gonna make a separate video on this shelf and kind of our tips. If you're gonna make your own garage shelf, how to customize it and some ideas on how to make it um, fit into small spaces. This one is on a roller, so it actually rolls out. We put wheels on it and then we have some boards on the side so that we can actually stack without worrying about it falling over. So I'm gonna be posting that soon. So be on the lookout unless you're watching this in the future so you can look it up. It'll be a custom garage shelf. So I decided to move all of our can goods to the garage. Now I mentioned earlier that we wanted to get rid of all store-bought containers, plastic bags, cans, etc. So really the reason behind this is to get rid of any toxins in our environment and that we might be ingesting in our food. So um, anything that's lined with BPA, you know, plastic, things that can get warm, we wanted to get rid of that as much as possible. Now we have been able to find a lot of canned items that are in a BPA-free container. So we have found that at our local store. I don't know if you have that near you, but that's kind of actually new for me to see. Um, also, so Ziploc bags, which they're not even Ziploc, so I shouldn't say that, but plastic bags, like freezer bags, sandwich bags, quart bags, I am able to find all of these BPA-free now, which I wasn't in the past. So I'm actually really excited because I was starting to think, how are we gonna store stuff if we wanna get rid of all the plastic? It's just not possible. But Whole Foods and Safeway, if you have those near you, have BPA-free everything. So that's really good news. So again, we don't use these cans very often, but when we need them, we, we need them. So we have some condensed coconut milk in here, condensed milk, a lot of tomato products. Like I said, we don't have any tomatoes right now because it's winter. And just some backup soups, which these are the kind of items that we might end up throwing out, but it's good to have in case we were to get snowed in or something, we actually did run out of food. And that's only come close a couple of times, but I think we've never actually had to dig into these resources, which is good. So we keep all of our pasta here. We like to buy our pasta in bulk. So we've got some organic pasta here because it doesn't go bad. And then we have the chicken food and the cat food and this little basket is all of the kitties wet food. So I can just reach in here every day and grab what I need. So it's really close. It's not inconvenient. And a lot of this stuff was in our in-house pantry before I moved it to the garage. And so this pantry was quite a bit more full. And as I was cleaning it out, I was hoping to be able to throw away a lot of items. But the reality was I really didn't have that much waste. I just needed to rethink my process for how to organize it. And I'm really glad I did because although you might think it doesn't matter if your pantry looks pretty, after all, this is a door or you can just close it. It totally matters. To me at least, walking into the kitchen and seeing a clean pantry because everything's in a basket and I've been through it actually makes me feel really good. So I'm able to cook easier when I know where everything is and I don't like not knowing where something is and wondering how much is being wasted or what's in the crawling in the back corner of the pantry. So I'm really happy that I did this. Well, I hope you enjoyed hearing about how I organized our kitchen pantry and our garage shelf. I feel like I can actually show off this pantry now and I didn't really expect to feel like that because it's kind of in an awkward spot and it's really narrow, but with only a few baskets and organizational tools, it actually looks really nice and I'm proud to show people it. And I actually am filming this end part of this video about a couple weeks after I started the pantry organization because that's just how it worked out. And I can tell you that I've been using this pantry for a couple weeks now and it works perfectly. So you know you've done it right when you don't have to change it to use it. So if you find yourself organizing something and then you're like, now we have to put all the other stuff back, then you didn't do it right. <laughs> 
So my number one rule for myself was it has to match what you're actually going to use. All right, well, if you're new to my page, make sure you subscribe on YouTube and like on Facebook. Every week I post new farm to table recipes, natural living, and homesteading from our homestead here in Duval. As always, feel free to share this video with someone you think would like it. Thank you so much for watching this video and for stopping by our farmhouse, and I'll see you next week.